Hello everyone, my name is Igor and today I'm going to show you how to install Akibana Big Brake Kit on a Nissan 350Z. So here we can see pretty much everything that we're going to be working with today. It's two brand new front calipers. It's Akibana which installed stock on the Infinities and Nissan 370Z with the sport package. Uh, I, for the front rotors, I got Z1 Motorsport uh, cross drilled and slotted 14 inch rotors. For the rear, it's gonna be Akebone as well. Uh, it's two piston rotors, and for the rear, I'm, I'm sorry, calipers. And for the rear rotors, it's the power stop, again, cross drilled and slotted. I also got some handbrake shoes just from the AutoZone. Um, here is the stainless steel white switch I'm going to be using from the Z1 Motorsport again. Uh, here is the brake pads for the front and for the rear. And the brackets for the front calipers. And I guess that's it. I'm also going to be using the DOT4 brake fluid. And yeah, so here we go. But because I didn't want any of all brake fluid in my new calipers, I'm gonna flush the brake system before installing the big brake kit. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. So as you can see, I already car got the car jacked up and I took the wheels off. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put the new brake fluid in there and gonna flush all four calipers, starting from the passenger side rear, then another rear, then passenger side front, and then driver front. Because we want to start from the farthest from the brake cylinder. So I already flushed the brake fluid through the passenger rear side, and you can take a look at it, it's all black and disgusting, and the brand new one is pretty clear. So um, I'm gonna do exact same thing on the rear driver side, and I'm gonna show you how. So before start flushing, we want to make sure that we top off our master brake cylinder. So we just take this cap off. We can see that the level of the brake fluid right now between max and minimum because I was flushing the passenger rear side. So I'm just gonna top it off real quick with the dot four, which I'm using for my car in my case. Make sure you don't spill it all over because it's pretty corrosive and it will destroy your pan, paint and etc. So we basically topped it off. Gonna put the cap back on. Gonna close the bottle too. Right now we're gonna move on to here. Here I got this one man bleeder. Uh, I got this from the pet bars, it costed like eight bucks or something like that so just a little clear hose this is the magnet and inside here there is another clear hose which goes all the way to the end so what we're gonna do with this i'm gonna take this rubber thing off from the bleeder valve I'm gonna put this silicon hose on the bleeder valve nice and tight and I want to make sure that this thing is much higher than the bleeder valve because I don't want air to be sucked back into the system so yeah and right now unscrew the bleeder valve so we can see that the brake fluid is coming through this hose right here and right now we want to go inside the car and press on the brake pedal all the way a couple of times. I'm gonna do it like four or five times. That's how much it's gonna take to fill up this that little bottle. I'm pressing the brakes like five times and the bottle is all the way full right now. So I'm just gonna tie back the bleeder wall nice and tight. Right now I can take the bottle off, empty this little bottle into this bigger one. 
and then I'm gonna repeat exactly the same thing like four, four more times. So this is how much brake fluid I pumped through the rear calipers and right now I'm gonna empty this little container into a bigger one and I'm gonna move on to the front ones and um, it's ex exact same process but I'm anyways gonna show you how to do it with the front ones too so you know. So I press the brake pedal about six times and we can see that this little bottle is all the way full so I'm gonna tied back the bleeder wall like this then I'm gonna take this bottle down here we go and I'm just gonna empty it real quick and then I'm gonna repeat the process about three more times so I just finished flushing the brake system so the next thing I need to do, I need to take all four spacers and then I'm gonna start working on the calipers and the new rudders. Just wanna share with you a little trick, if you wanna take off the spacer from the front wheel and you only want in the garage so there is nobody else to press on the brakes, you can put the screwdriver in a rotor like this and then you're gonna be unscrewing the spacer the screwdriver gonna stop the rotor from spinning against the caliper and that's how you can take off the spacing right so as you can see it's already night time outside because i already done this the passenger side right here take a look how it looks on the rear and up front and right now I'm gonna show you how to do it when I'm gonna be installing the driver's side and we are gonna start with the rear side so here we go I just want to tell you what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna take off this caliper to take it off there is two bolts on the back one right here on the top and another one on the bottom and then we will be able to take the rudder off and then I'm also gonna replace the handbrake shoes but it's gonna be on a separate video so this one not gonna be very long and then we're gonna trim the dust shield a little bit so our new rudder will fit and then we're gonna assemble everything back in place and also we're gonna replace the how they call it brake lines we got the new stainless steel ones and I'm gonna show you everything right now so let's start all right so the first thing which we're gonna do as I already told you guys it's we need to take the old caliper off to do that I believe it's 19 millimeter bolt right here yep there is 19 millimeter And for the bottom one, it's pretty hard to put the uh, socket on, so I'm gonna use the open end wrench. So here is the bolt, which we're gonna need to unscrew. This, you see how I use another open end wrench to have a bigger leverage, so it's gonna be easier to break it loose. Here we go. Here is why it was so hard to take the bolt off. But we're gonna use the new one anyways. So we got the copper off. Gonna release the handbrake. Now we can take the rudder off. I'm gonna show you how much bigger the new rotor is than the old one. Pretty significant difference, right? So here is the caliper which we're gonna use and I'm gonna show you why we need to trim this. We need to cut the edges off so we can put so we can align it with the holes on the knuckles. 
and also why we need to trim the dust shield right here because the rotor is much bigger than the dust shield and the dust shield on the way so I'm gonna cut it as the flower as you want to save it and I just want to unfold the edges I'll show you right now when you use grinder make sure you wear protective glasses and right now I'm just gonna unfold it like this and that way our rotor will fit right here and we're still gonna have the dust shield let's see if we need to cut any more uh, no we should be good looks like we aligning with all the mountain points so right now i'm gonna put the brake line on the new caliper here i'm gonna show you how i'm gonna do this i hope you can see everything like so and then i'm gonna take the bungee bolt and we also need two copper washers on both sides it's very important that we and they are have to be new you can't reuse your old one or anything like that our brake line should be here like that so we're gonna take one copper washer put it on the bungee bolt back here i'm gonna take another one i'm gonna put it between the brake line and the caliper and i'm gonna put another one between the bungee bolt and the brake line Got a hand tied it. Got our brake line preset on the caliper. I'm gonna lose the brake line right here. To do that, we need a 10 millimeter open ended wrench. We got it loose. And uh, tie it back for now. What am I gonna do next? I'm gonna put this caliper on the knuckle. You wanna put couple lug nuts over here so the rotor stay in place while you're working with the caliper. We are gonna put our new brake line in. But before we do that, here is a little bracket which holds this brake line in place. We're gonna, we wanna take it off. Alrighty, we got it off. So we are pretty much done over here. The last thing we have to do is to put the brake pads in but i'm gonna do that a little bit later and right now i'm just gonna put the spacer back in place so some people got the three-piece wheels i got the three-piece spacers this number one So right now we are moving on to the front side. We also gonna replace the old rotor, old caliper with the new one as well as the rotor. And also I'm gonna show you how to install the Z1 adapter brackets for the Akebono brakes. So the first thing we need to do, we need to unscrew the front caliper. I just loosen the two bolts on the back. It's now gonna take them out, bolts out. Right now we can take the caliper off. I'm just gonna hand it on the brake line because I don't care about the brake line. So here our old rotor off. I'm gonna put it to the side and right now I'm gonna show you why we need to trim this dust shield. When I put the bracket like this, this edge needs to be trimmed a little bit so it's not on the way. Here we go, right now it's gonna fit.
can see it the next day and why I couldn't finish the job yesterday because I didn't have the brake pads for the rear side and also for the adaptive brackets for the front calipers there is the allen bolts like this and I didn't have the right head socket head for it so I just went to the Home Depot and bought some and right now I'm gonna finish the job real quick. I'm gonna finish the rear calipers first because the only last thing I need to do I need to install the brake pads so that's what we are gonna do right now. It's pretty simple on this kind of calipers so we need to take these cutter pins off make sure you don't lose them like so then you can just slide off these little pins right now we're gonna need to take two pads make sure they're all the same, same. lubricant for the pads i'm gonna use just a tiny bit on the back side right here where it's gonna touch the piston like this yeah this is gonna be more than enough and we just slide it in like so here and right here and then we're taking one of those brackets and then we're taking these pins and aligning them with the holes on the pads and this little plate another pad and here we go and right now we need to put back in this little cutter pins the other one in okay brake pads right here installed so to install the front calipers i want to install this bracket first and then i'm gonna put the brake line on the new caliper and then I'm gonna switch the brake lines with the calipers. So to install the bracket there is only one way to install it and it's pretty clear on the Z1 instructions but I'm gonna show you real quick. So we got these two um, bolts which go through here, it's pretty tight fit. So and last night last night I already trimmed this dust shield so new caliper will fit in here so we just taken this on bolt put in the true like this we're gonna need to torque it down I believe to 75 foot pounds of torque so I got a torque wrench right here set up for 75 foot pounds of torque right now I already got the bracket installed and torqued down what I need to do I need to put the brake line on the caliper and to do so exact same thing as I did on the rear caliper we got the bungee bolt and the two copper washers so we're gonna put one of the copper washers on the bungee bolt like this and then we're gonna put another copper washer between the brake line and the caliper just wanna hand tie it real quick so we got the caliper with the brake line pre-assembled so we want to take off this mounts first these little nuts and then we're gonna be ready to use the actual brake line and to install the new one in so we got this nuts out and out of the way and we move the brake line out of the way the next thing I want to do I want to put the rotor on and to keep the rotor in place I'm gonna bolt it down with the lug nuts all right so two lug nuts in our case will be enough and what am I gonna do next I'm gonna put the caliper on this bracket right here but when I was installed it on the other side so this two bolts I'm gonna hold the caliper on that bracket and they were just a little bit too long that they go through the caliper and getting stuck against the rotor and we didn't want that obviously so what I'm how am I gonna fix it I'm just gonna put 
two washers on each of them and that way we're gonna push it a little bit farther away and just gonna be just enough space for order to spin freely. I'm just taking the torque range, setting it up to 98 foot pounds of torque. So the last thing we wanna do right here is to disconnect the brake line. Gonna take the open ended range behind the strut is gonna go to the hard line. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And then we can put in this little bracket. And then we're gonna tie it the hard line over here. So I already finished all four corners. We got all the brake lines and the brake pads installed. Everything is torqued down. So the last thing we need to do, we need to bleed the brakes again. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And of course, before we start bleeding, I want to top off the brake fluid. We're gonna start with the passenger rear and then we're gonna go the same direction we went when I was flushing the brake system. So I'm just gonna show you one more time uh, the air bubbles which are gonna come out from the brake system. So this is our one-man bleeder which we already used previously in this video. So I'm just gonna put this end of the hose on this bleeder wall right here. And I'm gonna mount the, this bottle right here on top. And that way you'll see the air bubbles coming out from the Caliper. I'm using the leader wall. So I just wanted to add that all of these calipers have the two leader walls. One of them right here on the back this guy right here and another one right here and also another big thing to bleed the brakes on the Nissan 350Z you have to have a car running because we got the ABS pump and it will be on only when the car is running so the other way you won't be able to bleed the brakes I tried it a couple of times and it didn't work and as soon as I started the car and I started bleeding again, it worked out perfectly. And with these two bleeder walls, when I'm bleeding each caliper, I'm starting with the inner bleeder wall, which is right here. So I bleed the brakes through this wall, then through this one again, and then just in case I came back to this one, so I basically did bleeding on each caliper two times from two bleeder valves inner one, outer one, then inner one again and then outer one again and that way I just made sure that I have no air bubbles inside the caliper anywhere between the pistons and yeah, so this is how it goes and one more time, very important thing to have the car running during the bleeding process I hope you guys like the video. If you do like it, please hit that like button for me and consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.